Hi, I'm Kelly Brenberg. I'm a digital collage artist. And as a digital collage artist, I have isolated thousands of images from their backgrounds. There are lots of different ways to remove images from their backgrounds. Some are more quick than others, some are more effective, some cost money, and some are free. There's one way that's brand new and it's actually kind of magical. I'm sharing what I've learned in the last three years so you don't have to isolate a million images. You'll learn all of my best tips and tricks in under an hour. Isolating images from their backgrounds is a super useful tool. You can use it to create everything from personalized greeting cards to digital art. This class is perfect for anyone who wants to learn how to isolate an image from its background. I'll be using my iPad and Apple Pencil. I'll show you four different ways of removing an image from its background. Two of the methods are free. One method has a one-time cost of $10, and the other method requires a yearly membership. But there's lots of other ways to achieve this. You may have a favorite method that I don't know about, so I would love for us to teach each other. So please share what you've learned about isolating an image from its background as a class project. I'd love for all of us to be able to learn from each other. For your class project, I've compiled 33 different images for you to experiment with. They're all from Unsplash. Unsplash is a website full of gorgeous photos that are freely usable for any of your creative projects. Are you ready to become a pro at isolating images from their background? Let's get started. For the class project, you'll experiment with removing a background from one or more photos. Feel free to use any photo that you'd like. To make it easy for you, I have compiled 33 different photos for you to use for your class project. All of the photos are from Unsplash, and they are freely usable for any of your creative projects. To access the class assets, click the Project and Resources tab from a browser. You won't be able to access these goodies from the Skillshare app. Feel free to use one or more of the methods that I teach in class, or you can choose an entirely different method. That way we can all learn from each other. I'll leave a comment back for every project uploaded. If you have any questions, I've got you. Click on the Discussions tab. I'll respond to every question and comment. Are you ready to take the first step? Download the class resources. I will see you in the next lesson. Welcome back. We are going to go in order. So we are going to start with Adobe's free background removal. So if we just type in Adobe free background removal, it, we can go right to free use forever and start for free. What we want to choose here is remove background. So we're going to browse on our device, go to photo library, and we're going to start with this pink flower. So we're going to hit use. With this, all of the checkerboard area is a clear PNG background. Checkerboard always means clear. So it looks like it did a pretty good job. We'll be able to see more clearly once we get it into Procreate and give it a different colored background. So let's just hit download. So here's the pink flower within our download files. And you can see here that there's some white bits that Adobe did not remove like this area here and this area here. Other than that, it did a pretty good job. So let's keep moving. Let's upload a new photo. So let's hit photo library. And now we are going to try this smiling woman and we are going to hit use. And for this one, it failed to remove the background. What it will say in this case is please try again. And in my experience, I've done a lot of experimenting with this. Some photos, Adobe will just not remove the background. I don't know if it's too hard for it with all the wispy hairs or whatever. Let's try it one more time. Yeah, it says failed to remove background. If you hit learn more, it comes up with 
some troubleshooting information. None of it applies to this right now. It's a JPEG file. It's small enough. If, if it was too large, over 6,000 pixels, it would tell us that. So it just didn't work for that one. So let's go back to the free background removal, upload our photo, and we will do the peacock feathers. And here we can see that it removed a lot, but not all. There's a lot of white left still there that's not a checkerboard. So let's hit download. And that went into my files. We're gonna be doing Canva next, but first so we don't get confused, let's import what we've done already. And those went to our files. So I'm gonna to go to Recent and Files, and we have these flowers the feathers. I should back up for a second. If you want to bring something into Procreate from your files, you hit import. And if you want to bring something into Procreate from your photos, you hit photo. Here is the result for our woman. It was saved to the camera roll. It did not work. So let's label all these so we don't get confused. So we are going to call these Adobe flowers. We'll call this one Adobe feather. And we will call this Adobe Woman Fail. Let's arrange these into a stack so we have them together. So I'm going to hit Select, and I'm going to check all of these, and then I'm going to hit Stack. And we will call this stack Background Removal. So now that we know how Adobe did, we are going to go into our next automatic background removal, and that is Canva. I will see you in the next lesson for our Canva experiment. Welcome back. In the last lesson, we explored Adobe's free background removal, which did pretty well on one, not so great on another, and there was a fail on the woman with the loose hair tendrils. So we're gonna see how Canva does with this. Canva is a free graphic design app. However, you do need Canva Pro for this experiment. Like I said earlier, you can get a month free trial. You'll find the link in the class project and resources section. Okay, so we're gonna continue on with the same three photos. There's two different ways to remove backgrounds in Canva. And we are gonna start with this one. This is the home page of Canva. There's an upload. We're going to upload from our photo library. We are going to start with this pink flower again. We're going to go in the same order with the same things. So we're going to hit use and we are going to hit edit photo. And here's the background removal. So I'm just going to tap that. So this one looks pretty good. I don't see any errors here, but we'll be able to see better once we get into Procreate. So I'm going to move into Procreate by hitting Save, Download, and then I'm going to tap Procreate and it'll send it right into Procreate. The second way to remove a background is if you are already within a template within Procreate. So if you would just tap Create a Design, and let's say we wanted to do an Instagram story we can go to uploads and we've already uploaded this file to canva if you wanted to upload a different file to canva you would hit upload files and again you could choose to upload from your photo library or from your files so here is our pink flower and we are going to hit edit image and background removal and that was quick so let's hit this arrow and hit save with transparency and put that into Procreate. Since we are in Canva, we'll just keep going with this upload method, photo library. Next is our friend here. I'm gonna hit use, edit photo, background removal. Canva did a really great job here with her wisps. That's a really challenging thing to get. So it looks like Canva did a great job here. So we are gonna hit save, download, and put it right into Procreate. Let's continue our experiment in Canva with our peacock feather, edit photo, background remover. That did a pretty good job. This is a pretty challenging thing for a background removal with all these little tiny wisps. So let's save that into Procreate and we'll look at it there. 
Okay, so this is our background removal stack and these are our new things that we moved into Procreate. We will label this one Canva and this is the Canva background removal. And this is a much smaller file and this is the Canva from template. We did that from an Instagram story template. And this is our Canva peacock feather. Let's move these into our stack and we will look at them later once we have them all done. Next we're doing iOS, but for now let's move them by hitting select, boop, 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 and put them into this background removal stack. And they are all labeled. Okay, so we will be looking at the quality more closely after we do the iOS. The iOS background removal system is next. I will see you in the next lesson. Welcome back. In the last lesson, we explored Canva's background removal tools. In this lesson, we're going to explore the brand new iOS 16 background removal. And this is free to people who have an iPad or an iPhone with iOS 16 or greater. So this is pretty cool. I am in my camera roll and this is our pink flower. And what I could do here is touch it. And I don't know if, if you could see the wave it went through, but look at this. That is so cool. Look at that. It's like magic. You can hit copy and you could, for example, text it to somebody. I could hit paste and then text it to my husband and he would receive this. The results here look pretty similar to Adobe's free background removal. Pretty good, but there's some white along in some of the same areas but we'll look at that more closely later. We could also go into Procreate. It remembers that we have a paste, so I'm gonna do a new canvas. Well, if I hit allow paste, what is it gonna do? Where did it paste it? Oh, no, no. Let me just do a screen size canvas and let's see if we do a three finger drag down if it will remember the paste. There it is. So this is our paste from the iOS background removal. And if we put, say, a green color in there, if we fill the layer and bring this up, we'll be able to see how it did. And once again, yeah, there's a little white here. It did a pretty good job. There's another way to do it within Procreate as well. And I'm gonna hit clear and we can swipe up. These are the apps that we used most recently down at the bottom when we swiped up. So I'm gonna do that again, swipe up. And if you have a problem doing this, you might want to clean your screen. That will make a difference, make it a little bit easier. So here's our camera roll. We can bring it right into here with a split screen. Here's the one without the background removed. So if we hold our fingers on this, it starts to kind of shimmy again, and we can just drag it right into our canvas. So it looks exactly the same as the other one. I'm going to unselect it. Pretty good job. Not perfect. Apple is always improving things, of course. This is brand new. I'm guessing it will get better as time goes on, but that's how it looked for our flower. And let's just label this iOS. And let's keep going. I'm gonna go to my photos. I'm going to find this woman. And if we press down, we can hit copy and we could paste it again, or we could do this method, bring this camera roll here. You can do this with your finger or an Apple pencil and it gets that kind of wavy look. And here she is. If we just give her a different background color, we can see here that iOS did a pretty good job, but it, when it comes to all the little wisps and tendrils, it did not do as well as Canva. So we will label this iOS and I will do another big canvas here and we will bring up our peacock feather. There we go. And this looks similar to the Adobe Express one. Again, if we filled the background layer with a different color and brought this one up, we can see how it did. I'm gonna label this one iOS 2. They are all within our background removal stack. 
In the next lesson, we'll zoom in and look more carefully at the results of how each one did with the background removal. I will see you in the next lesson. I wanted to take a moment and congratulate you. You are over halfway through this class. So good job. This is a quick class and we are going to keep going. Welcome back. In this lesson, we are going to zoom in and look at some of the finer details of the different automatic background removal options. So let's start with Adobe. I just want to make sure that I grab this color since we're using it so it'll be consistent through all of them. So this is Adobe and I'm going to fill this layer with that green, put the flower on top. Let's just do this so we can see them all more clearly. First, we can see the, the different sizes again. Using the Canva background removal from the template, you just wanna make sure you have a really large template that you're doing it from. And I can't remember if I mentioned this before, but I'll just mention it this time. The largest Canva size right now available on Canva is this one, 4166 pixels by 6,000. I have canvases or templates set up permanently for vertical and horizontal. So if I'm using background removal, I use it from there rather than say from an Instagram story where you're working from a small canvas, it will automatically make the results smaller. Let's go back to Procreate. If you want to scroll through different canvases easily, you just open it like that and then you can scroll through all of them. So that's what I'm doing here. We have our flowers. This is Adobe. Adobe has issues here and here and here. And this is Canva, the small Canva. It's smaller and I think it did a little bit better job, but there is an issue here, right there, and maybe right there. But overall it did a better job. This is the Canva from the automatic background removal section, which is the one I recommend using. And again, a pretty good job. This is the iOS one. And in this case, I think it did not do as well as Adobe. Let's scroll back. See, Adobe cleaned up that part, but iOS did not. And I think there's this is an area that iOS didn't clean up right here as well. And I'll show you in the next lesson how we would tidy those up in Procreate. So in this one, I would say Canva is the winner. It has the cleanest background removal. Let's go on to this woman. So this was the Adobe option. It did not work. So this one is a fail. This is Canva. And let's put that same green color in there so we can see what we are looking at. So this is Canva from the background removal. This did a great job. I think it cut off a few of her tendrils over here, but that's okay. This is an area where Canva really shines. Getting those wisps is not easy. And this was iOS. And again, it did a pretty good job except for the wisps. There's just these white areas around here. And Canva, this is pretty perfect. I think her tendrils were a little bit longer here, but you would never know it. And in this instance, Canva, is the winner. Now let's move on to our peacock feather. And for that, we're using this peachy pinky background. So let's fill the layers. Okay, so going in order here is Adobe's free background removal. It didn't work. Adobe did not catch the finer details. This is Canva. Canva did a great job. If we zoom in, there might be some little tiny white things, but Canva, did a great job and this is iOS 16 and it was very similar to Adobe's free background removal. So here we go. Canva once again is the winner. Adobe background removal and the iOS background removal at this point in time are pretty similar. And if you just need a quick, simple project, they would work great. But when it comes to the ones with the finer details, the wisps and the tendrils, Canva really does a better job. In the next lesson, we're going to be looking at Procreate's free hand selection option for background removal. I will see you in the next lesson.
Welcome back. In the last lesson, we compared the results for three different automatic background removal. In this lesson, we're going to be using Procreate's freehand selection tool to isolate something. And Procreate, once again, is as of now about a $10 flat fee for the app. It's not a yearly charge, it's a one-time fee. A steal, if you ask me. Let's go back to our class assets and I'm going to use this little frog. So I'm gonna choose this little frog, I'm gonna hit the arrow, I'm gonna hit view, and I am going to hit save to photos. And I am gonna go into Procreate. I wanna be in our same background removal stack and I am going to hit photo and import. So this is how we would do it by hand in Procreate. We would hit this ribbon and then we would hit freehand. So this is a freehand selection. And then we're tracing around our little frog. And let me show you how to do that. Let's say we wanna get the frog and the little stem it's on. I'm tapping there and I'm tapping here for a straight line and I'm just gonna close it around here. You can see here, but there's a lot of diagonal lines. I've only selected that part and I'm gonna cut it. So I did a three finger drag down to bring up the copy paste menu and I hit cut. Let's bring in a peach color again so we can see the background pretty clearly. We're gonna keep going like that. Freehand selection. I'm gonna tap down here. I'm gonna do a straight line and then I am going to keep kind of drawing around here and I want to get just inside the frog so I don't get any of the background. And so this is just tracing. And you can be as thorough with this or as not thorough as you want to be. I'm just kind of doing a quickie job here. If an object is really large, sometimes I will just do it in chunks like this. I'll hop around here and do a cut. And then I'm gonna keep going. Freehand selection. Sometimes it helps to zoom out to see what we are actually tracing. And here we have a nice long straight line, boop. And let's bring it around here, three finger drag down and cut. So here is our little frog. And if you zoom in here, there are some kind of rough edges and you can leave it like that or you could clean it up. Procreate's airbrushing set are great for some gentle erasing. Let's just choose the medium hard airbrush as an eraser. So I hit eraser, medium hard airbrush, and let's just see how big that is. So I'm adjusting the size. That looks pretty good. And I'm just gonna go in and kind of smooth out our rough edges because a frog would be smooth, right? I haven't touched one lately, but um, I'm guessing they're still smooth. <laughs> kind of slimy though, right? Um, okay, so I am just gently erasing some of the rough edges here. And if it's a smaller space, I could make my cursor smaller. smooth out his little frog bottom. Okay, that looks pretty good. And if we wanted to save him with a transparent background, we would turn off the, the peach, we would turn off the background color. I could name him if I wanted to make it easier to find him. I think I will do that. Let's name him Green Frog. So wrench, share, PNG, and in this case, I would save it to my files rather than to my camera roll because PNG files take up more space than the camera roll. So what Apple does, it will keep it as a PNG for a while. And then afterwards, it will convert it to a JPEG. I isolated them from the background on Wednesday and they've already been converted to a JPEG or something with a non-transparent background. And that's just to save space. So I'm going to delete my photo. And if we go back to our frog once again, there he's isolated, we can see that. But if I revisit this little frog in a couple days or a week, 
he probably will no longer have a transparent background. That's just something to be aware of. So save PNGs to your files rather than to your camera roll. If we wanted to go back and look at cleaning up some of these other ones, we could. This is our Adobe Flower. We could use our freehand selection to clean it up. Selection, freehand, we could go in here and cut that. And it also, now that I'm looking at it a little bit more closely, has these white edges, which, you know, depending on your project, you might want it perfect or it might be okay to have these little imperfections. But again, I would use my airbrush to kind of clean these up. If we look at our feather, this is the feather from the iOS, which was similar to the Adobe background removal. There is no way we could really do this by hand. I mean, I have an eraser. What layer am I on? The wrong layer. Um, there's just no way it would be. Well, I guess you could do it. It would be incredibly tedious and you wouldn't be able to get these little tiny details. I wouldn't even try it myself. This is the iOS hair one. This would be very difficult to clean up because of the wispy nature with either an eraser or with the freehand selection. It would be very tedious work and it would be pretty imprecise. So that is how you would use freehand selection in Canva to either remove the background or to clean up something else that you used an automatic background removal on. I will see you in the final lesson for a quick wrap up. I will see you there. Congratulations, you have completed this class. Thank you so much for joining me. We can all learn from each other about different ways to remove an item from its background, so please share what you've learned in the class project area. If you'd like lots more resources for digital art, please check out my website, kellybrenberg.com. If you'd like to learn more about digital art and collage, check out my other Skillshare classes. Want to be the first to know about new classes or bonus content? Follow me on Skillshare by clicking here. Thank you so much for joining me and I hope to see you soon.